Yes, guys. So let's get into the topics of NDS one one five, where we talk about revenue from contracts with customers. So here we are typically talking about certain nature of transactions which are related to revenue recognition contracts and how they have to be dealt with according to the change in the standard or the new paragraphs added as per ICA. So now let's look at certain transactions as such. The first such transaction that I will talk about is sale with a right to return. What do you mean by sale with a right to return? Now sometimes it so happens that I sell a good and the customer has a right to return the good within a particular time period. These are sale on uh, acceptance or return basis, right? So these are common transactions like how you sell goods on Mintra, right? So basically the customer has a right to, uh, you know, return the good which he purchased on Mintra within a period of 30 days from the end of the day on which, uh, within 30 days from the end of the day on which that particular transaction has occurred. So these are common. So my question is, whenever we have such kind of transactions which are sale on return basis, then my point is if the seller at the time of return is charging certain cost. Now what is the cost that he'll normally charge? Think from a seller's point of view, if you are a seller, what is the general charges that you expect a customer to pay you? I'll say, I have sent the goods to you, right? And these goods which I've sent to you had some packing involved in it. There was some courier charges which are involved in it. I have to pick up the goods from you, repack the goods and sell the goods probably at a discounted price because you might have actually damaged the good. So whenever these kind of costs are incurred and the seller is expecting certain costs to be reimbursed by the customer in case there is a return. Mintra 100% credit, I agree. But what if, what if the seller says, I will reduct, I'll deduct 5% of the total consideration or the transaction cost if you return the good within the time period. Quite possible. Now in such kind of transactions, how do I recognize the transaction? Let's look at it. Let's say for example, there is a seller X and there is a customer Y. I'm saying for suppose my transaction involves 100 units to be sent out at the rate of rupee 50 per unit. Okay. And I'm saying Y has a right to return. Y has a right to return. He can exercise his right to return, but at the time of right to return, the customer pays 10% of transaction price. Let's say, for suppose, X expects Let's say his expectation is 95% acceptance. And let's say this transaction actually occurred on 6th of March 2021. On this particular date, such a transaction has occurred between X and Y where X sold 100 units at 50 rupees per unit to the customer Y. Y has a right to return and if he returns, he pays 10% of the transaction price to the customer. That means at the time of refund, I will not refund the entire 50 rupees, but I will only refund you 45 rupees. Clear? Now let's say if the transaction has occurred on 6th March in the books of Y, or in the books of X, Seller, what is the transaction to be recorded? The transaction goes like this bank account debit. How much did I receive? I received 
100 units into 50 rupees which is nothing but how much is the amount 100 into 50 is 5000 but can i recognize the entire amount as revenue so two sales i cannot recognize the entire 5000 the entire 5000 is not possible because i am reasonably expecting that there is a chance of return so therefore 5000 is not to be recognized then how much revenue should i recognize i will split it into two parts first part on 95 percent of goods which i am expecting they should not be returned i'll recognize full revenue plus on the balance 5 percent of the goods which are expected to be returned by the customer i am saying that i'll still collect 10 percent of the transaction price that is 5 rupees so what is the cost 95 into 50 plus 5 into 5 is 25 95 into 50 plus 25 so i will recognize the revenue only to the extent of 4775 then what about the balance there is still a balance of 225 rupees which has to be recognized as a credit then what is the amount to be recognized as a credit this balance credit i will recognize as a liability liability of return let's say for example he has actually returned about two units okay let's say for example the actual return within 30 days is two units that's not more than two just two units got returned by the end of 30 days that was the time limit offered for return then in such case i will go on like this i'll say debit the liability of return liability of return how much did i debit earlier or uh, how much did i credit earlier 225 rupees the same 225 you debit it now because 30 days is over now i have to recognize this transaction of return how will i recognize the transaction two sales how many did he return two how much did he not return three right because i said five nine five percent of the goods are eligible or expected to be returned out of five only two got returned so the balance three i'll have to recognize a sale three units i have already recognized 10 percent of the transaction price as revenue because i said that is the amount which i expect or which the customer shall pay even in case of return therefore i'll only recognize 45 rupees as say the balance amount which i refund i'll write it like this but how much will you refund i will refund for two units 45 rupees is what i'll return so what is the amount Amounts to be recognized 135 and 90. This is exactly the new nature of transaction which got involved as far as India's 115 is concerned. So, what am I saying? Whenever there is a right to return, I will recognize the transaction only to the extent it is probable to occur. To the extent it is not probable, here I said 95% of the transaction will occur. There is a 5% chance of return. So, such 5% chance of return, I recognize revenue only to the extent of the transaction price I will receive in the case of return. Here I said 10% of the transaction price will be held by the supplier even in case of return. So, the, for the 5% of the goods which are expected to be returned, I recognize 5 rupees as revenue on the date of transaction itself. But within 30 days, since he did not return the goods, I recognize like this. To the extent of two units that he actually returned, I will refund 45 rupees directly to the customer. 
But for the balance three units, where I recognized only five rupees of revenue, expecting him to return the good, I'll recognize the balance 45 as sales. Now let's start looking at what is given out there. I'll go back to the PDF. Yes, now what did he say? Entity sometimes charges a restocking fee when the product is returned. This fee may be levied by entities to compensate the cost of repacking, shipping, reselling the item at a lower price to another customer. Restocking fees for goods is expected to be returned will be included in the estimate of the transaction price at the contract inception and recorded as revenue when and as the control of the good transfers. For example, the entity enters into a contract with a customer to sell 10 units of the product at 100 rupees per unit. The customer has a right to return the product, but if he does so, it, he will be charged 3 rupees as stocking fee. That is 3 rupees, oh sorry, 3% as stocking fee, which is 3 rupees. The entity estimates that 10% of the goods sold will be returned upon transfer of control of those 10 units. Now, how much will the enterprise recognize as revenue? Out of 10 units, 10% are expected to pay return, that is 1. So on the balance 9 units, entire 100 rupees of revenue can be recognized on the date of transaction at the inception of contract itself. So 9 into 100, 900 plus on the 1 unit which I expect to, uh, which I expect the customer to return the good, I am still expecting 3 rupees to be paid for that particular good. So 1 unit into 3 rupees is 3. Therefore, 900 plus 3, 903 will be recognized as revenue on the date of transaction or on the date of commencement of the contract. Clear? The balance 97 rupees of the transaction price, which is the liability for return, should be recognized separately. If the good gets returned, I will refund it in bank. If the good does not get re returned, then the balance 97 rupees as liability will now be recognized as revenue. This is a very new concept coming out called as restocking fees. Here. Yeah. Now, how much revenue should the customer or uh, should to the should the enterprise recognize? Goes with the simple concept under India's 115. To the extent it is probable that the revenue recognized will not be reversed. This logic was constantly repeated in India's 115, continues to be active even now. Here. Yeah.